Data is incredibly important when we're taking a look at learning analytics, um, and it's it's very important for institutions to work with JISC to understand um, data specifications. Um, however, you have to keep in mind that just because data conforms to a certain specification doesn't mean that the data is a good quality. Um, so really working with JISC and the vendors to understand the types of data that is needed for data extract um, is vital in regard to um, the predictive model for student success. Data can be quite a complicated topic with institutions. Uh, one of the main challenges that we see is that there is a difference between historical data and live data. So an institution may assume that because they've got one to three years of historical VLE or student record system data that they're ready to go and everything's fine. But there's a big difference between what was already captured and how to actually make sure that the data that will be captured on a live basis is to the right standard in the right language, is going to be captured in the right way to actually be useful to, to a model. Um, so that's part of what we have to discuss with an institution is the difference between the two. Yeah, um, I, I think on a strategic level, one thing we, we've seen uh, with institutions is implementing in an information strategy. And, and we've seen these at, at various levels, but an understanding of the importance of data, the fact that everybody generates data and everybody needs to look after that data kind of puts in a different place. So an example of, of that not happening, we've heard uh, of people um, deleting the VLE data every month because they didn't think it was of any value. So they were clearing disk space. Um, whereas an information strategy which puts in, in place you know, some principles such as um, transparency, purpose of the data collection, um, and, and how that is going to be curated, can, can also help things. Um, it, that again sounds like a piece of work, but putting that in place, starting with a principle of transparency means that your freedom of information requests just go down because by default the data's out there. Um, yes, we may make exceptions where it's not public, but the starting point is yes, that data's public. Suddenly we begin to take care of our data. In regard to the architecture of um, the different products that JISC offers, um, it's very important that institutions take a look at the offerings and keeping in mind that some of these offerings are open source tools. Um, so just because a, for example, a staff dashboard is being offered, that doesn't necessarily mean that the institution has to use that particular um, tool. It may be a good idea for the institution to be very open-minded to take a look at that tool from this is how the data is displayed. Um, but at the end of the implementation, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the product that they have to implement. Um, these are just tools that can help um, better visualize the data so the institutions can keep a very open mind of we like this aspect of this tool and what it's showing versus this piece is not necessarily helpful. Um, so from a, from a beginning onboarding piloting perspective, those tools can be used to help drive requirements to determine the finalization of the product that will be chosen in the final implementation. When reviewing vendor options for a learning analytics solution, uh, it's quite important to take into account what the goals of the institution actually are, what do they want to measure, uh, what do they want the outcomes to be. So it's sort of working backwards. What would you like the, this, the successful outcome to be? And then looking at what types of vendors or products might be uh, the best utilized to either visualize data or to um, allow a personal tutor to uh, record notes or document their, their interactions with a student. Um, how data literate is your staff to be able to, to actually present information to academics or to personal tutors in that way? So those are the types of things you need to take into account when you're looking at vendor options. Also taking into account what type of budget you have uh, as an institution. Do you want to go for more of a commercial option? Do you want to go for more of an open source option? Um, how interested are you in having ongoing support? Do you want to bring it in in-house for uh, that, that level of support for an institution? So those are the types of things we ask. I, I would um, 
probably add something which is kind of unusual in the way um, UKHE tends to work for sure, which is to um, think of this as uh, a stat. So actually there's a, there's a number of options out there which people could opt for. Um, I, I would start with uh, a limited mission in, in this. Do something. But don't feel that you, you're going to get yourself tied into a vendor. So um, make sure that they're adhering to such standards as exist. Uh, and think about the how easy is it to join, how easy is it to leave, and to take your data, uh, everything you, you have collected with you in, into the next iteration. So um, it, it's not a one-off here. Um, do something, for goodness sake, do something and learn from that, but don't, don't be looking for something that will provide everything because we don't even know what that is now.